page 147, Perik Shneim Vesrim, in Shabbat, in, what, where is it called? Chavit. Is that a chapter? Yeah. Chapter Chavit. <laughs> so, Amar Rav Huna? Yep. I'm going to add Talitah with Shabbat. If you shake out your cloak on Shabbat, you're liable for a chatat. And we said this only is regarding new garments. Aval atike for old ones, late lumber. There is no objection to shaking them out. And we said this only as regards black garments. So black garments meaning new black garments which it says you're not allowed to shake them out. Aval bechivare vesumake, but regarding white or red ones, late lumbar, there is no objection to shaking them out. I assume even if they're new. Behu de kafid alayehu, and the above applies when the owner is particular about it. Keeping them clean, that is. Ah. Ula ikla le pumbadita. So Ula came to pumbadita. Chazara bananda kam menapte glimayehu. He observed that the scholars were shaking out their coats on Shabbat. Ama kam chalalin rabanan shabta. He exclaimed, the rabbis are desecrating Shabbos. I want to know that desecrating Shabbos. Amalehu Rav Yehuda. So Rav Yehuda, who was dean, said to his mates, Nefutse le ba'ape, shake your coats out to his face. Anan lo kastinan midi. We are not particular about this at all. So it says here, in our locality, we have no compunction about wearing an unshaken cloak on a weekday. And therefore, if we indeed shake these garments to beautify them on Shabbos, we commit no transgression. So in other words, they didn't do it on a regular weekday, so therefore for Shabbos they're doing something different and it's okay. Uh, what is, what's your expansion? Rabbi Stein solves hasn't expanded that way. Has he done, said it in a different way? Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said it that way. Shabbat, Rav Yehuda said to the rabbis whom Ullah criticized, you may continue to shake your cloaks in his presence. We are not at all particular about this, and it is therefore permitted for us to shake the dust from our cloaks. Yeah, yeah I don't think the extra expansion is needed. I think it says it all. Abaye hava ka'e kame de Rav Yosef, Avay was standing before Rav Yosef. Amalei, so Rav Yosef said to him, Hav li kumtai, give me my cap. Chaza di ika tala alei, Avay saw that there was dew on it. Hava kam chasem lemait valei, he was reluctant to give it to him. He said it because he feared violating a prohibition by shaking off the dew. Amale Rav Yosefita by Nafutz Shadei Anan La Kaftinan Midi. Shake it out. We are not particular about wearing a garment that has dew on it. And he's got to shake off the dew and throw me the hat. We are not at all particular about the cleanliness of the hair. And it's therefore permitted to shave yeah. off the dew. So it's not so not in relation to cleanliness but in regards to dew. Mm. I would have put that in the same category as potentially moving the cap more than four amot in a in a um Rashut Harabim, 
and you've got and you're carrying water on it, just like mind you, you'd be carrying the cap as well. But you know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, I, I know what you're talking about. I'm just wondering about you know where if you've got a cap and you've how would it get due on it in the normal course of events? You've left it on the window sill overnight? Maybe. Could be. And you know, you're up the next morning with a colleague, you're saying, you know, give him my cap, please. Mm. And otherwise, why would you settle on it? It wouldn't happen if it was kept inside the house all the time. And you wouldn't keep your cap out in the courtyard. At least I don't imagine you would. Maybe it was resting on the ground. Maybe that's why he said to his attend said to Abaye, yeah. who was his student, my cap's on the ground, on the grass over there. Yeah. Get it for me. Amar Rav Yitzchak Bar Yosef Amar Rav Yochanan Hayotzeh betalit mekupelet munachat lo al ketefo b'shabat If you go out on Shabbat with a folded cloak resting on your shoulder. This is from private to public. We've learnt this, if you recall, a while back. I recall it. I do Folded recall. cloak over the shoulder. Chayav Chatat. Oh, yeah, we did. I do recall now. Tanya Namihachi. It was also John of Rosa. Sochare Kasut Hayotim. Clothing merchants who go out in public area, betalitot mekupalot umunachot al ketefam b'shabbat, with cloaks folded and resting on their shoulders on Shabbos, chayav chayvin chatat velo sacharei kasut bilvad amru, and this applies not just to clothing merchants, ela kol adam, but all people, ela shedarkan shel mochrin lezekach. However. <coughs> Um, we're talking, we talked about merchants mm. because it's their practice to go out in this way. The chen vani hayotzeh b'maot hatzrurin lo hatzrurin lo bistino. Likewise, a shopkeeper who goes out <coughs> with coins tied to his garment. A shopkeeper who goes out with coins tied to his garment. He's got bound in his cloak. Bound in his cloak, that's much better. Chayev um, Chatat. That's a bit obvious, isn't it? Ah, oh, isn't that where the coins... Do you remember when you put it at a sort of button? The lo- um, but did you say pouch or just tied? So this will, we'll come to that. Ah, but what, what translation did it give for those words? A shopkeeper goes out with coins bound in his cloak. Bound in his cloak. He's liable to being a sin offering. <laughs> Runners, according to this. Rashi says Ratan is the name of a place. Tosafot, however, suggests the word is people who hurry. Foot messengers, according to this. Runners, or that is foot messengers, according to Stein's Ah, yeah. Yeah. So, Ratanites. <laughs> Ratanin yotim besudarin she'al ktefan. I was just thinking of that. Is to hope. <coughs> mm. So, Ratani, don't you have? No, I'm just saying maybe the uh, Ratanim comes from the root of rats to run to hurry. Mm. That's all I was thinking about. It's very likely. The Loratanim build that. So they can go out with. Uh, I've got kerchiefs, you've got scarves, yeah? Yeah. Uh, but he explains um, a scarf in such a way that you uh, are obviously talking about what we'd also call a kerchief, that is a scarf that's too short to cover the majority of your body. So 
do that. Uh, not around. It's also kerchief. Um, the kerchief mentioned here was a long but narrow garment that could be worn mm -hmm. over the head and draped over the back and shoulders. It was customarily worn by messengers, messengers and was designed not to hang down far in the back so as to allow the messengers to run quickly while wearing it. Since it was the practice of the messengers to wear the end of the kerchief folded back up onto their shoulders to allow them even greater mobility, this is considered a normal way to wear this garment, and one so attired is therefore permitted to traverse, traverse public domain. Aha! So Ratanites can go out, Ratanin can go out with kerchiefs on their shoulders, folded around their shoulders, for law Ratanin Bilvad Amru, and applies not just for Ratanin, Ella Koladam, but to everyone, Ella Shidar Kansha Ratanin Latsid Bakak. However, it, we spoke about Ratanites because they talk about how they go out normally in that way. Amar Rabbi Yehuda. Masse be Horkanos, Horkanos, Benoshel Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkanos, Sheatza be Suda she Alktefo be Shabbat. He went out with a kerchief on his shoulder in public on Shabbat. Ella Shnima Kurucha lo be Etzbao. However, there was a thread wrapped around his finger. So it leave stop the kerchief from falling off. Mm. So it must have been tied to it a little bit. Ukhsheba hadavar lifne chachamim amru. So when the matter came for the sages, they said, Afilu ein krucha lo be'etzbao. Even if there had been no thread wrapped around his finger, it would have been permissible. Darash rav nachman bar rav chizda mishme darav chizda halacha af Al pish enima krucha krucha lo beetz boyotav. The law is even if there is no thread wrapped around one's finger, it's permissible. Ola ikla levi asi barhini. So all have visited the academy of asi barhini. But umine, the students inquired of him. Ma hu lasod marzev beshabat. What? What about making a gutter on Shabbat? Oh, that's back to the the thing on the in the pot in the kadera in the cask. Chavit. Uh, he replied, Amar lehu, Hachi Amar Rabbi Eli, Asur la asot marzev be Shabbat. It's forbidden to make a gutter on Shabbat. My marzev, Amar Rabzera kise bavliata, Babylonian pockets which were formed by lifting up the bottom of the cloaks and tying them to their shoulders to make pocket-like folds in their garments. Ah, I see. Okay. Rabbi Yirmiya Hava Yativ Kamed Rabbi Zera Amale So he said to Rabbi Zera Hachimai If I do it this way <laughs> What's the problem? Amale Asur he replied to him, it's forbidden, Rachimai. And what about this way? Amalei Asur. Amara Papa. Nakot hai klala bidach. Take this general rule in your hand. Kol adata dil kanufe. Folding with the intent of gathering up the garment, Asur. Kol dil hatnaot. And any fold to make it more attractive, charade. It's permissible. Ki hadra shisha bere dirav idi. The case of Rav Shisha is the son of Rav Idi. Mitna e bistino hava. He used to beautify his cloak in that way. By folding it on his shoulders. So it's sort of like a lubava tarong, I should imagine. Lubava tarong? Yeah, with their talasim, you know, they roll it round and oh, yeah. so that it sort of falls in a. Oh, I see. Anyway, there's more about this. Actually, I find doing I kind of kind of do it that way a little bit myself, where you fold it underneath. Normally, you'd take it, yeah, put it over the, the top. I, I normally do it. We, and I started doing it their way, where instead of folding it underneath, I take it up and fold it backwards underneath. Well, there's less chance of it slipping off. Much less chance. 
so much better. Ki Hasarasimi Amar. Actually, now, is that used to beautify it or is it for function? Well, I think in their case, they do it to beautify it because this is the way they've ever did. And from their point of view, this is a, a beautiful way of doing things, copying the Rebbe. I never even thought about it. I thought it was just functionally better. But it's beautifying, you reckon? Hmm. I think it's likely. The, the Rebbe being the, the absolute standard of behaviour for them. Okay. Kiyata Ravdimi Amar. So Ravdimi came from Israel to Babel and said, Panachat Yata Rabbi Lassadeh. Rebbe went out into the field one day. Vahayush Neitide Talito Munachin Al Ketifo. And the two sides of his cloak were resting on his shoulders, obviously, in a Shabbos. Amale Panav Yosho Ben Zeruz Ben Hamiv Shel Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yosho, uh, so Yosho ben Zeru, the son of Rabbi Meir's father-in-law, said to Rabbi, The Zor, lo chiev Rabbi Meir chatat? For this, didn't Rabbi Meir hold one libel for a chatat? Amalei! Rabbi replied, Dikdek Rabbi Meir adkan. Was Rabbi Meir exacting? So exacting on the matter? Shil shel Rabbi talito. But Rabbi still unfills his cloak. Interesting. Once it's filled up, are you allowed to unfill it as well? Ki ata Ravin Amar, when Ravin came from Israel to Babel, he said, Lo Yehoshua ben Zeruz Hava. It was not Yehoshua ben Zeruz who accosted Rebbe. Ela Yehoshua ben Kafusai haya chatanosha Rabbi Akiva. It was Yehoshua ben Kafusai, the son-in-law of Rabbi Akiva. Ama bezo lochiv Rabbi Akiva chatat. He said, for acting like this, did Rabbi Akiva not hold one libel for chatat? Ama lo. Rabbi replied, diktek Rabbi Akiva adkan. Was Rabbi Akiva so exacting on this? Shil shel Rabbi talito. And Rabbi unfilled his cloak. Do you agree with all that? The way it comes out? Yeah. Kiyata Rav Shmuel bar Rav Yehuda Amar. When Rav Shmuel bar Rav Yehuda came from Israel to Babel, he said, Nishal Itmar was reported. Rebbe was asked. Not that Rebbe himself was wearing the cloak. Yeah. Um, the full expansion we've got here is when Rav Shmuel bar Rav Yehuda came, he said, this is not what happened, as Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi himself did not wear his cloak folded up on his shoulders on Shabbat. Rather, it was stated that Rabbi was asked, meaning that this question came before him, and he wanted to rule leniently until he was informed that some of the greatest saints of that generation were ruled stringently. So whenever it says, was Rabbi Meir so exacting on that? Uh, it was, yes. The question is, was he really so stringent? Or, I didn't realise he was so stringent. Mm. Huh. Mishnah. Harachet b'mei ma'ara or b'mei teveria. See, I think it's much better, Peter, to go through the text, mm. try and get out of it really what it's wanting to say, and then if you don't get it, come back and talk about it. Yeah. But to start talking about it halfway through it, you just lose all track. Mishnah. Haraches v'me ma'ara, or v'me teveria, one who bathes in the water of a cave, or in the waters of teveria, the hot springs there, v'nistapeg afilu be'eser aluntiot, and dried himself even with ten cows. Lo... Yevyem biyado, you can't carry them home in your hand. Aval, asara b'nei adam mistabkin ba'aluntit achat. However, ten people may drive themselves with one towel. Pneihem, yedeihem, gleihem, or mevyin or tam biyadam. And they may carry the towel home in their hands. Good. 
And the explanation comes out later in the Gemara, although Steinsalz supplies it here. Do you want to say something? Well, the, the problem with the man who's tried himself with ten towels is that he might come to bring it out. Yeah. Whereas where ten people have used the one towel, although it's sopping wet, as they're all going together, they will prevent whoever's carrying the towel from bringing it out. Because they are ten who will be interested in protecting the Shabbat. Because there are several people present and they will remind each other that it is prohibited to ring a towel on the Shabbat. You would imagine if it was ten towels, then they wouldn't... I mean, maybe it's not the kind of towel I'm thinking about, Mm -hmm. but they really wouldn't get very... You wouldn't really be able to wring out water from one... Probably something closer to being a dish rag. Probably. 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 And the rabbis prohibited bathing in hot water on Shabbat, even if it was heated before Shabbat. This was prohibited because the bath had to... House attendants would often heat the water on Shabbat and claim that it had been heated before the Shabbat. Initially, even bathing in the water of thermal springs was prohibited. When the rabbis saw that people could not endure a total ban on hot water bathing, they lifted the ban on bathing in thermal springs. Wow. Interesting. Interesting that people were saying this is very clean and not smelling. Yeah, there are people who don't feel that great massive need to wash themselves. Maybe our, um, our uh, passion for getting into a nice hot mm. tub of water hasn't changed in 2000 years. <laughs> Umemash <laughs> Machine. On Shabbos we apply oil and massage your body, but you can't massage vigorously, and we can't scrape our skin. We may not go down to the Kurdima, the river on Shabbos, the Enosin, a pick to Vizin, a pick to Vizin, nor can we take an emetic which would induce vomiting. Ve'ein ma'atzvin et hakatan. We may not straighten the limbs of an infant. Ve'ein ma'atzvin et hashever. Or set a broken bone. Mi shenifreka yado v'raglo. If one's hand of foot became dislocated, lo yitrepa yitrepes v'tonen. You may not massage them with cold water. Avarochet. But you can bathe according to your usual way. The im nitrape and if he's healed, he's healed. Hmm. And he's translated slightly differently in relation to the hand. One whose hand or foot was dislocated may not move them about vigorously in cold water which is the standard method of treatment. That's what the tour explains as well. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, uh, that's interesting. Because what's interesting is that at the beginning of that paragraph it said, Sachin ume mash machin. You can apply and massage. Mm. And then Rabbi Art Scroll says, Lo yitrepes betonen. You may ma- not massage with cold water. And that's not the same word. Massage is used as the translation, but it's not the same Hebrew word. And the way he translates it is not massage. One may smear oil on his body and gently rub his body with his hand. Mm. That's the way he's translated it. Okay, Gemara. Katane me me'ara, Mishnah teaches 
about cave waters. Dumya Demetiveria, uh, which is comparable to? Mm. Similar. Similar. To the waters of Tiveria, of the Tiverian hot springs. Mm. So there's an analogy. Ma me Tiveria Chamin, just as the waters Tiveria are hot, af me ma'ara Chamin. So the cave waters of the Mishnah are hot. Hairochet, one who bathes, so one who bathes in these waters. Di avad, ein lechachila lo. Yes, after the fact, um, so in height, bidi avad, di avad, after the fact of bathing and drying, you're not allowed to carry the towel. Lechachila, but in the first place you shouldn't have bathed. Is that the expansion you've got? With regard to one who bathes after the fact, yes, one may dry himself. However, one may not bathe ab initio, as had the Mishnah intended to pit bathing ab initio, it would have said one may bathe in cave water. This proves by inference that rinsing one's entire body by pouring um, water on it, etc., etc. Mikwal, this implies Jelihishtatev Kolgofo that if he simply rinses his whole body, so, it implies, so this implies that he didn't immerse but he rinsed his whole mm. body. Afilo Lachachilo Shapidame then even initially it is fine for him to do this, meaning to rinse, I assume. Yeah. Money. Who authored the Mishnah? Rabbi Shimon he. Tatanya. Loisatefadam ben bechamin ben betonen. One may not rinse his entire body with either hot or cold water on Shabbos. That's Rabbi Meir. Give her Rabbi Meir. Sorry, I'm just... No, I didn't, right. It's not going inside my brain. One may not rinse his entire body with either hot or cold water shops. Ah, give her Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Shimon Matir. Rabbi Shimon permits rinsing. With either hot or cold. Rabbi Yehuda Meir. Bechamin Asur. With hot, it's forbidden. Betzone and Mutar. And with cold, it's permitted. Okay. Venista peg akilu the eser aluntios dried himself with ten towels. Reisha revuta kamashmalan. The first part informs us of a novelty. Kamashmalan. That doesn't. Kamashmalan means we learn from this. Also too. The uh, sefer revuta kamashmalan and the second part. Informs us of novelty. Is there a novel word novelty used? Or? Uh, the first cause teaches us a novel concept, and the latter cause teaches us a novel concept. Mm -hmm. The first part informs us of a novel concept. That even these, the towels which do not have much water in them, since he's only one person. He may come to squeeze water out of them, inadvertently. The Sefer Revuta Kamashmalan, and the second part of the Mishnah informs us of a new concept. I feel a honey denefshe denefishe denefishe behumaya. Even these who have much water on their bodies, cave under a bim ninho, since they're a group. Madkarei Ahadzadei. They will remind each other not to squeeze it out on their way home. Tan Rabbanan. Mr. Peg Adam Ba'aluntir to Manichi Bechalon. Bechalon. By the way, how do they carry a towel? On Shabbos, they wrap around their bodies maybe. as a Probably. But then you've got ten guys walking home. Only one towel. Ten and towel. <laughs> 
Well, one of them came to tell and the other nine are watching it. Don't squeeze it, mate. Maybe it's less than three finger breaths by the Say walking home naked. Actually, they don't need to be walking home naked. They can go there dressed. Mm. Now, how would, so how would you carry it home? I suppose you carry it in your hand or you could wear it. Carrying it in the hand is the one that is the worry because even if you're not holding it tightly, you might squeeze. But well, if you're wearing this around. wet cloth around you, yeah. um, <clears throat> why bother drying yourself? Well, actually, further on in this, you will find that a uh, big rabbi does carry, but he, okay. he manages to avoid doing it Excellent. in public. Look out for me for notes or halachot about that. Um, okay, halacha. One may dry himself with a single towel. It is permitted to dry oneself with a towel on Shabbat and carry it home where adjoining of courtyards, that is, Erev, has been established. There is no concern that he will wring the towel. However, he may not hand the towel to a bath attendant due to the concern that the bath attendant will wring it out. So that is strange one now. It's bringing in courtyards. Well, that that will come. <coughs> okay. Tana Rabbanan. Mr. Pekadam be'alunti to manicha b'chalon. A person may dry himself with a towel and leave it in the window, the bathhouse window. Ve'lo yim serena le'ul yarin. But he may not give it to the bathhouse attendants. Mipnei she'chashudim al oto davar because they considered suspect in that regard. They might ring it out. Rabbi Shimon Omer. Mr. Peg, but Alun Titachat, he may dry himself with one towel. Umavia be a dollar to be a better, and then carry the towel home in his hand. <coughs> Thank you, Rabbi Shimon. Even though the towel may be quite wet, Rabbi Shimon is not concerned that the person will forget and wring it out. Clearly, Rabbi Shimon speaks of a case where the malacha of carrying is not an issue, i.e., an error has been made in the towel. Mm. What's the law about a lot of single person carrying? Amale, uh, he replies to Rabbi, Ha Rabbi Shimon Ha Rabbi. Here is Rabbi Shimon, here is Rabbi. Ha Shmuel, Ha Rabbi Yochanan. Here is Shmuel, here is Rabbi Yochanan. <coughs> All of whom All permitted. Who permitted. Mm. Wow. Rabbi Shimon, Ha Amran. Based on the Brisa that we quoted, uh, Rabbi Shimon, as for in regards to Rabbi Shimon, Hadamran, it's as we quoted. He commits. Rabbi Titania, Rabbi agrees, for it was taught, Brisa, my Rabbi, Keshe Hainu Lamedin Torah Eto Rabbi Shimon Bitkoa. When we were studying Torah under Rabbi Shimon in Tekoa, Hainu Ma'alin Shemen Va'aluntit Mechatel Lagag, we would carry oil and towels from courtyard to roof, Umigag <laughs> Lakarpaf, and from roof to Karpaf, Ache Hainu Magin Etel Ma'ayan, Shahinu Rachatimbo, until we would reach the spring in which we would bathe. Shmuel, Dama Rav Yodama Shmuel, Rabbi Yoda said in the name of Rabbi Shmuel, Mr. Pegadam be'aluntit, a person may dry himself with a towel, or mavia be'ato l'toch be'to. He can carry it home in his hand. <coughs> Rabbi Yochanan also subscribes, Dama Rabbi Chia Baraba ma Rabbi Yochanan halacha Mr. Pegadam be'aluntit, the Lord is a person may dry himself with a towel, mavia be'ato l'toch be'to. Umi Amar Rabbi Yochanan Hachi, but did Rabbi Yochanan really say that? Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Halacha Kista Mishnah. The halacha follows in the, an anonymous Mishnah. Utnan. And we learned in a Mishnah, Vinista Pega Philbe Esel Aluntit, and dried himself even with ten towels. Loi Vm Beto. 
may not carry the towels in his hand. Hahu kevin chan chan chachinai matne la. That Rabbi Yochanan attributes to Ben Chachinai. Okay. Amar Rabbi Chia bar Abba. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Chia bar Abba said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Ha'ul yarin mevin balare nashim levei banei. The bathhouse attendants may bring the women's child to the bathhouse. Uvivad shiz kaseh bahen roshan virulban, provided that the attendants cover their heads and most of their bodies walking with them. I assume women's tails were probably a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, more like a cloak. Sechanita, and someone wearing a sechanita, a kind of kerchief, usually wrapped over the head as one leaves the bathhouse to protect wet hair from the elements. Tarikh lakashashne rasheha lamata. You must tie the two ends of the garment below, so that it doesn't fall off your head. Amar Rabbi Chia Barabba, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Lamata Miktafayim, means below the shoulders. Amar Leu Rabbi Livnei Mechoza, Rabbi told the students of Mechoza. Ki Ma'avrito, Ma'avritu, Ma'anei, Ma'anei Livnei Chela, when you bring garments to the soldiers, on Shabbos, Shabivu behu lamata miktafayim. Let the ends of the garments hang down below your shoulders. So that you will wear them like a garment, not simply carry them. Stein Saltz has added. Mm. There's a little interesting note here. Good. When Gentile troops were stationed in a town, the local residents were often pressed into their service. This sometimes involved bringing the soldiers clothing to them through a public domain, according to the run. Rabbi told the townsfolk that if they were required to do this on Shabbos, they should not carry the clothing folded back upon their shoulders, a manner of carrying garments, where they should don the cloaks as if they were wearing them. Sakin Ume Mash Machine. So applying oil and softly massaging in. Tanrabanan. Sakin Ume Mash Ume Mash Machine. Bivne Maim Beshabat. We may apply oil and massage the intestinal area. Yep. On Shabbos. Ugilvad Shilo Yasek Derech Shehu Osebecho. Just so long as. One doesn't do it the way he usually does it on a weekday. Hey, Chiavid, how should one do it? Rabbi Chama Bachanin Amar, Sach Vachar Kach Me Mashmesh. Rub in the oil and afterwards massage the skin. Rabbi Yochanan said, Amar, Sach Umesham Umemam Shesh Ume Mashmesh Bevatachat. Rub in the oil and massage the skin simultaneously. Aval, lo mitamlin. You can't massage vigorously. Do you vigorously? How hell one may not exert himself. Ama rabbi chiabar, ava ama rabbi yochan. Asur lamod bekar kaita shel diomeset. It's forbidden to stand in the mud of the Diomsi River. <laughs> He's done that Shabbos. differently. Go on. Rabbi Yochanan said it is prohibited to stand on the floor of the therapeutic bathhouse of Diomset on mm. Shabbat because it warms and heals even if one is not bathing or exerting himself. Mm. Amar Rav Yehud Amar Rav. Kol Yemeha Shel Deyom Set Esrim Vechad Yom. The days where the Deyom Set uh, is therapeutic. Is therapeutic, thank you. Is, is all in all 21 days. Ve Atzeret Min Haminyan. And Shavuot 
is included in this. Yibay lehu atzeret lahai kisa or lahai kisa. Does Shavua mark this side, the beginning, or does it mark that side, the end of that 21 days? Tashma kamlin damashmuel kulhu shakyanei medivcha ve'ad atzarta ma'alu. All these drinks are at the best from Pesach until Shavuot. All medicinal drinks are effective from Passover to Shavuot. Mm, that's a very much better translation. Dilma hatam hu dechama dekarir alma malay. Perhaps there it is the fact that the cooler weather, that the cooler the world is, the more effective the drinks are. Right. Aval. Hacha mishum havlahu. But here, with the diopsis, it's on account of the vapors. Kevan de chamim alma tfe male. When the world is warmer, the mud is more effective, or the healing of mm. the therapy of the diopsis is more effective. Amara. And, and he's expanded to say the time period during which bathing is effective would only begin with Shavuot. That's the... Right, of course. That makes a lot of sense. Amar Rabbi Chelbo. Chamra difrugita umaya t'dimeset. The wine of prugita and the water of the dayom. Of the Diomses, Kipchu Aser Tashvatim Israel deprived Israel of the ten tribes, and he said that because the members of these tribes were attracted to the pleasures of wine and bathing, and did not occupy themselves with Torah, they were lost to the Jewish people. Well. Then we now get a cautionary tale. Rabbi, Rabbi Elazar ben Arach Iklalatam. Rabbi Elazar ben Arach came to that region. Im Shir Betara Batrayehu, he became attracted to these delights. Yakar Tamude, all his Torah knowledge became erased. Ki Hadar, when he returned, Atakam Mikri, the Sifra, he came got up to read from the Torah, the Al Mikra HaChodesh Hazelachem. He had wanted to read the part that says, this month shall be for you, the first of the month, which is when we were leaving Mitzrayim. It was the first of the, the first of the mitzvot that God gave us. Amar HaCheresh Hayalibam, he said, was their heart silent? Have their hearts become deaf? That's what he read. He did not actually forget so much that he no longer knew how to read. Rather, he unintentionally mispronounced the words, mistaking the Chaf Zain Daled for the similar letters Beit, Yud, and Reish. Yep. Wow. His colleagues then interpreted the resulting phrase, Hacheresh. Hayali Bam was the heart silent as a sign that he had forgotten much of his Torah learning. Ba'u Rabbanan Rachamei Alei. That's really amazing. The sages beseech God to have mercy upon him. Ba'zar Tamudeh. So, no, it returns. There's a little that's curious foot, footnote on him here. Did you notice that that they uh, requested mercy on him and God returned his Torah knowledge. So is it to say that he just forgot or is God actually... God took it away because he was... was in, imbibing in worldly pleasures. What's the note, please? Rabbi Elazar ben Arach, a preeminent disciple of Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai. At the time of the destruction of the Second Temple, Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai perceived Rabbi Elazar ben Arach as his most outstanding disciple, surpassing both Rabbi Yehoshua and Rabbi Eliezer HaGadol. 
and praised him greatly, both in his presence and in his absence. He was a great scholar of Agada and of the esoterica of the Torah. However, as the Midrash relates, he did not wish to settle with his colleagues in Yavne. Rather, following his wife's advice, he settled elsewhere, abandoning his Torah study. study. As the Gemara here relates, apparently he died young, long before his contemporaries. As such, Rabbi Elazar ben Arach left a limited imprint in Talmudic literature. The stamp of his genius is apparent, despite its absence from so many other realms. Mm. Wow. Almost done. Um, so the Haino Zitnan and this, that which we learned in the Mishnah, about Elazar ben Arach, Rabbi Noarei Omer, Hevei Golem Limkom Torah, exile yourself to a place of Torah. The Altamar Shehi Tavoacharecha, and do not say that the Torah will come after you. Shecharecha Yaka Yeka Yemuha Beadecha, for it's your colleagues who will cause it to remain with you. The El Binatecha Al Tishayen, and do not rely on your own understanding. That's a nice little thing. Mm. Tana was taught, Lo Rabbi Nehorai Shemo, the Tana was not named Rabbi Nehorai, Ella Rabbi Nehemi Shemo, Amreila, Rabbi Elazar Ben Arach Shemo, Velama Nikra Shemo Rabbi Nehorai. So why did it say Rabbi Nehorai? Sheman here. Because he illuminated i.e. manhir mm. the eyes of the sages in halacha. Now, back to the Mishnah. Aval lo mitgararin. Tan Rabbanan. Ein gararin bimigreret beshabat. We may not scrape with a strigil. Oh, what? He just said scraper. scraper. On the Shabbos. You've got something about it? Well, I know something about this because there's a very famous statue, Greek statue, of um, a young man scraping himself. And what they used to do, they didn't have soap. So they would go. They would rub themselves with the oil, yeah. and then they'd go into the hot room, and they'd <coughs> sweat, and the sweat would get the dirt that was in their pores into the oil, and then they would take a scraper and run it down their body, and scrape the oil off their body and the dirt with it. Mm. I wonder how you'd do that if you got very hairy skin. I imagine it wouldn't be so easy. Probably not. Anyway, you have your slave boy rub you down with a stone to get the hair. So. Oh, yeah? Is that I mean, what you're a possibility. Huh. So that's a, the so scraper? There, there's the scraper, or a variety of scrapers, uh. because you, they're curved in different ways because you've got to get around the back of your arm mm. and they scrape it. Mm-hmm. And here's the oil container. Huh. That's cute. All on one key ring. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Im hayu raglav meluch lachot b'titu v'tsua. If one's legs are soiled with mud or excrement, gorer kedako. You can scrape as he usually does. The eno chashesh, and he does not need to be concerned. Wait till you get the next bit. Hang on. If one's legs are soiled with mud or excrement, you can scrape as he usually does on a weekday, and he need not be concerned that he's violating. The mother of Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda made him a silver scraper, a special, especially for him on Shabbos. Yeah, yeah. You know, nothing's nothing's too good for my darling. Here, have a silver scraper, which of you? I suppose the advantage of a silver scraper too would be that uh, if it makes it a different way of doing it on Shabbat, precisely. That's what the Torah says. In the Mishnah Brewer, actually. Oh, wow. It's actually in the Mishnah Brewer. Okay. 
Um, but this is this is a chum because it says here you'd be doing it with a, in the usual manner with a scrape. It's okay, so doing it in the usual manner would have to be a. Well, I'm curious whether because it's in the mission of Brewer, I'm curious whether today it's the only way to go. Ein yodin le kordima v'cholei. We may not go down to the kordima river on Shabbos. Matama mishum pika because you might slip. <laughs> well, I <I'll> translate <laughs> that quite different. Go on. The Mishnah also taught that one may not enter a swampy river full of mud on Shabbat. The Gemara explains what That's is the, the reason for this. Yeah, mm. due to the mud. He translates that as a, a, a swampy river. He does it earlier on too. Mm-hmm. It says where one was likely to fall and soak his clothes. That's also, and you would be likely to wring out your drenched garments. This yeah, is it's more like a swamp. Yeah. Yes, that's what Rashi says. So he's got swampy. <coughs> I think he just covers himself both directions. The Enosin Atik Tevizin B'Shabbat, nor can we take an emetic on Shabbos. Ama Rabba Baba Chana, Ma Rabbi Yochanan, Lo Shano Ela Basam. This was taught only about herbs that induce the vomiting. Aval Yad Mutar, but if you put your finger down your throat, it's permitted, so bulimia is okay. Tanya, Lusona Brosa, Rabbi Nechemi Omer, Af Bechol Asur, even on a weekday, it's forbidden to stick your finger down your throat. Mifnei, Hefset Ochelim, because of the wastage of food. Good point. The Ein Matzvin Et Hakatan, we may not straighten the limbs of an infant. Amar Rabba Bar Bar Chana, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Le Pufei, La Pufei Yenuka, the Shabbat, Shapir Dame. Wrapping an infant on Shabbat is permitted. The Ha'anan Tanan, Ein Matzvin, but we learned in our Mishnah you can't straighten the limbs of an infant. So obviously they're going to be wrapped like this. Yeah, they're straight swaddling. Now. Swaddling. Hatam Bechumri Shidra, there in the Mishnah. This is talking about spinal vertebrae that you can't straighten. Demechaze Kivone, Kivone, because it has the appearance of building. It's rabbinically forbidden. Whereas wrapping the infant does not have that appearance. The ain mechazirin et hashever, nor can we set a broken bone. Ama Rabbi Chana begedata'a amashmuel. So Rabbi Chana from Baghdad said, in the name of Shmuel, halacha mechazirin et hashever. The law is that we may indeed set a broken bone. Oh, it sounds like we're going to have some interesting machloket on that. And here he tells us that as one may reset a break. Ah, uh, reset. Mm-hmm. Is a halacha re- a broken or fully dislocated bone may be reset on Shabbat in accordance with the ruling of Shmuel. Mm. And setting a, resetting a <coughs> dislocated limb... If one's hand or foot was completely dislocated from its joint, it may be reset <coughs> on Shabbat. It may mean what? It may be reset on Shabbat. However, if it is not completely dislocated and does not pose a danger to the limb, one may only wash it in the usual manner. If it is healed in this manner, so be it. Which gets back to our Mishnah. Yeah. The Ritva says that the reason for the permit of reset of setting a broken bone, is that a broken bone endangers the entire limb if it is not set immediately, mm. which I can definitely see. Very logical. Apart from, dare one say, the terrible pain that you experience. When it's broken? Yes. I've never had a broken limb, but I've... Well... I know people who have. There's two issues about setting a broken bone. 
one is is it talking about dislocating a joint mm. or is it talking about breaking a bone? If it's talking about a broken bone, then what we generally tend to do today is just wrap it in some plaster and let it heal on its own. Mm. So you're not even massaging or anything. Yeah. And even with, with ribs now, they don't even snap them up unless right. it's a danger that might pierce the lungs. Whereas, I personally, in one of my three broken arms, have had, when I was about 10 or whatever it was, I have had the bone manipulated back into position. And that was excruciating. I've heard... Um, that dislocated shoulders and things like that absolutely kill when they're put back in. Mm. This is not happy. Okay. Thanks, Peter.